So let's start with Jane and um, who is it? Jane and Fred. Jane and Fred today. So Jane says we can't buy the newest HD television because we don't have enough money saved. So the situation is Jane and Fred want to buy a television. Fred says, well, what is the upper limit we can afford? So now we're going to get up to the resistance point. So I want to buy the TV, but what's our resistance point is the question. Jane says, I don't think we can afford any of these televisions. They are all too expensive. And Fred responds, yeah, I guess they are kind of expensive. And Jane says, I think we can hold out for a couple more years and just keep what we've got. Okay, now this is a very easy to understand, straightforward situation. Very simple, right? Fred and Jane have something in common. They also have something different. What's in common? The TV they have now is too old. They want to get a better one, a new one. So they go shopping and they look at some HD TVs. And what do they find out? The price is over. The price is over the resistance point, higher than the resistance point. Remember, if you go over the resistance point for the buyer, the buyer is just going to say, I'm not going to buy. It costs too much. I'm walking away. I'm not going to negotiate. So Jane says, hey, that's over. That's over our resistance point. I don't want to buy. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm done. But Fred, you see, Fred does want to buy. He doesn't say it too clearly yet, but he does want to buy. So what does he say to influence Jane? Fred says, that's true. We can get by, but I was just thinking of your mother. And Jane responds, what about my mother? And Fred says, well, you know your parents have that Sony HD television. And your mother really is picky about the TV quality when she watches her shows. Jane says, I see what you mean. And Fred says, and isn't your mother going to stay with us in the summer for a month? If it was just for us, I would say we don't really need it. But this is important for your mother also. And Jane says, okay, I agree we need to get a better television, but we should shop around more and compare more prices. So what just happened there? Fred says, that's a good idea, but you know LG has a special offer this week. We don't need to make any payment for two months. And Jane says, maybe that's a good deal. So if we look at this situation with Jane and Fred, I think it's a great little example, easy to understand. Jane and Fred have something in common. They have something a little bit different. No, it's a little bit secret. We don't know exactly, but it looks like Fred really wants to buy that new TV. And Jane, well, Jane's a little bit worried about how much money they have. And so what do they do? Before the negotiation, Jane and Fred, they think of what's their target price, right? What's their resistance point? Resistance point, target price. What did they find out? They went to the store. The prices are above, above the resistance point. So game over, no TV. And what does Fred do? Fred says, yeah, right, I agree. It's above our resistance point, but let me remind you something. Your mother, Jane, your mother, she likes to watch TV and she has a special TV, a special quality HD TV. And with a special quality HD TV, she's very picky. So she's going to come to our house. She's going to stay for one month. Is she going to be happy? Do you want your mother to not be happy? I'm okay. I'm worried about your mother. So of course Fred is maybe doing this not just for the mother-in-law, but maybe for himself too. But that's part of negotiation. What Fred's doing is he's changing the outcome valuation. That is, yes, we have our target price. We have our resistance point, 
But let me tell you something, and maybe that something will change this. Because if you want your mother to come here for one month and complain every day about the quality of our TV, then maybe a higher price is okay. So that's basically what changing the evaluation of the outcome, the outcome valuation comes down to. That is to say, well, maybe we can change because it's not what I thought it was. Let's go on to a business negotiation and see what that looks like. Let's begin with Fred. Fred says, we can always find other buyers. So there must be a seller. And Alex says, our understanding is that you are having a hard time selling this product and you have a large inventory. So Alex is a buyer and Fred is the seller. So Alex says that you have too much inventory, you cannot sell your product, it's hard for you to sell. And Fred says, I don't know where you got that information, but it is not true. This product has been selling very well. Alex says, we heard that sales are not going so well. We can take some of that inventory off your hands, but we need a much bigger discount. Okay, now here we get a very clear kind of business situation, right? Buyer and a seller. The buyer wants to pay less. The seller wants to get a higher price. Now, if the market demand is high, then the seller is going to sell to the buyer, and the buyer can sell to the consumers, and everyone can be happy. That's the goal. But that in between there is distributive, potentially distributive. That is, if I raise the price, you're going to have to sell for more. But if the customers are not willing to pay more, then you'll have to take a loss. And the other way is true too. If I keep selling for less and less to you, and you sell to the market for a higher price, you'll make more. So there has to be this negotiation here that's very distributive. One side wins, one side loses. So in this case, I think that you have a lot of inventory. That means I think your company cannot sell your product. You want to sell to me, I want to buy, but I don't want to pay the high price. I heard information that your inventory is full. You cannot sell. So why do I bring this up? Because I want to ask for a lower price. Fred says, that is not what my managers tell me. All the information I have is that sales are strong. Alex says, look, no one wants to exploit this situation, but we can walk away from this today and you'll end up with nothing. We just need this product. We just don't need this product now. So he's trying to change the condition by saying, you know, it's hard for you to sell your product. You know, I don't need your product. Uh, your product's okay, but the consumers don't really like it. So give me a lower price. That's the argument. Fred says, what kind of discount are you asking for? And Alex says, at least 50%. So here we begin with that opening offer there, at least 50%. And Fred says, that is more than I'm authorized to approve. I'll have to contact my boss and get directions. And Alex says, I would agree if we weren't facing a deadline. Now, we're gonna talk about these more, but these are all very clear tactics, right? So in this case, we're saying things like, I would like to buy, but your product is not so popular. I would like to buy, but I hear you're not doing very well. I would like to buy, but I think your inventory is high. Are you okay selling your products? Is there a problem, right? I would, I would like to buy, but, so that but is trying to change things, change the valuation of the negotiation. On the other hand, uh, we could say, well, you know, I did not hear that. I don't think that's true. Our product's selling very well, right? Or, you know, you want to get a discount, I cannot say yes, I cannot say no, I must talk to my boss, I must talk to my manager. These are all what we call tactics. There's how do you do it? How do you execute your negotiation, especially in the distributive situation? Fred says, 
My authorized bargaining limit is 40% discount. That's the most I can give. And Alex says, I have my limit also. And quite honestly, this product just doesn't have a strong demand. So both sides, they say they're being honest, right? Both sides say, oh, to tell the truth, I'm telling you the truth, to be honest. But that's not really true. What they're doing is they're using tactics. And to say, to be honest, is a tactic. I want to tell you some information. I want to give you some of my secret information. Here is my secret information. But is it real? Uh, not necessarily. Fred says, have you considered our new product that's in market testing now? If we lose money on this deal, we may have to reconsider who we sell to in the future. So here Fred is saying, we have another product. That product's really good. And you know what? I might not sell that to you. I might sell that to other competitors and not to you if you do not buy my product now. And Alex says, of course we are interested in getting priority on your new product. In view of maintaining a good relationship, we can reduce our demand to a 40% discount, but that is our bottom line. So here we're talking about what? The relationship, right? This is the relationship. Remember we talked about relationship. We talked about how important is this deal now? How important is the relationship? So the idea is, well, I will give you more. I will give you more discount, but we must keep a good relationship. Fred says, I know my boss is committed to maintaining a good relationship with your firm. However, as I said, we cannot take a loss on this deal. So again, Fred is trying to also agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Good relationship, that's good. I agree. I'm trying to help you, but I can't give you this. And Alex says, can you make your commitment more concrete? That means I hear you, you're saying you agree, but what can you do? What can you really do for me? And Fred says, I'm sure we can make a strong commitment to give you our first shipments of the new product, but first we need to compete, first we need to complete this agreement. So if you agree now to this product, then later we will give you the new product first before other competitors. And Alex responds by saying, I might be able to move down on the discount if a commitment is made on the new product. And Fred says, I will need to check with our production department to be sure. But there should be no problem in supplying you with 10,000 units of the first production run. So what are we talking about here? We're not even talking about the product now. We're talking about the next product. Right now we're negotiating about product A. But what are we talking about? We're talking about product B, a future product. Why are we talking about a future product when today I'm negotiating for product A? Well, the reason is product A, we can't come to an agreement. The discount and the asking price are too far apart. The discount request and the discount granted have a big gap. Both sides are too far apart. So what do they do? They say, well, look, maybe we can move together. But how do we move together? Let's make our future relationship better. How do we do that? Promise me, how many will you buy in the future? And how many will you supply me in the future? So that's what we're doing here. We're changing the outcome valuations. Alex says, let's split the difference at 35% and make an informal agreement on first shipment of the new product. So let's go halfway, 35%, and then promise for the quantity of the new product. Okay, so that's a very good example. A little bit more complicated than the family example, but still the exact same idea. And the idea is, well, I, I'm past my resistance point. I don't want to negotiate anymore. I give up. But no, wait, wait, don't give up yet because I want to tell you something. I want to tell you some more information. And that information should let you see, yes, maybe this is more than you want to spend, but I'm going to give you something else. Maybe in the future, I'm going to give you something. Maybe in the present, I'm going to give you something. But I'm going to change that outcome.